Hi everyone, this is Dr. Stefan. Welcome to another video. In this one, I'd like to talk about acid reflux and idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. So I received this comment that I'll read to you because it's really interesting. So John Ball 3356. So I don't know, sometimes the names don't come up. It's just the username that seems to be coming up these days. But anyway, this is the comment. So I've been diagnosed with IPF and wonder if reflux could have caused it. I was prescribed omeprazole, but they, it, they made me vomit and I was wary of taking them anyway, so I didn't. I'm not entirely sure if this is related to the omeprazole or the antifibrotic treatment, but let's go on. So I use a bed wedge, very good, and sleep on my left side and occasionally take Gaviscon for stomach acid. But still now I have idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis or IPF. Also, do inhalers help with the disease? Thank you. So basically it's a more complex comment, but there's quite a few things here that really warrant a small comment from from my side as an interstitial lung disease physician so first of all whether the reflux causes idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis in itself it's a little bit of a controversial topic and actually there's quite a bit of research going on at the moment trying to figure out whether this is actually the case or whether the reflux is just something that is coincidental so it's something that happens at the same time with the ipf and maybe plays a role in either triggering the condition or worsening it. So there are some, some trials at the moment uh, where people are prescribed anti-acid medications, for example, lansoprazole, which is a derivative of this omiprazole or something similar to it, basically to see whether that could uh, slow down the progression over time or improve symptoms. So there has been a lot of change in the recommendation. At some point, people who had acid reflux were recommended to actually take anti-acid medication because it was thought that it may play a role in worsening the IPF. Now that science is a little bit controversial so it's not entirely sure whether everyone should be treated with these sort of medications to prevent acid. As it stands right now there isn't yet a lot of evidence but the recommendation is generally that if you do suffer with acid reflux with a lot of stomach acid that comes up and irritates the airways you can feel a little bit of burn you know after a big meal or a spicy meal or something like that it's probably recommended that you take an anti-acid tablet because it may contribute so it has been known that in some other conditions such as asthma for example acid reflux can worsen the condition but asthma at the same time is an airways disease so it affects the actual airways uh, leading into the the spongy tissue of the lungs while idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis or ipf is a condition that affects generally the deeper parts of the lungs so whether the acid will reach those deeper parts of the lungs and actually influence how the disease behaves is a little bit unclear, but certainly it doesn't help. So if you do suffer with acid reflux, probably you need to take some measures to prevent that acid reflux. And actually going back to the comment just for a second now, if I may. So John Ball is saying that they use a bed wedge and sleep on the left side. So, okay. So basically using a bed wedge, uh, the person who's making this comment is referring to these sort of triangular shaped pillows that you can use to elevate your torso. And I think that's actually a great thing to have, especially if you're suffering with acid reflux, because at the end of the day, you can imagine if you are taking an anti-acid tablet, you're just making the stomach uh, contents less acidic, but it doesn't stop the reflux. So the reflux will still come up. So there will be gastric contents coming up, which may still irritate the airways. So, if you're using gravity to keep things down, so you're elevating your torso a little bit, it may actually help in keeping stomach contents down, especially if you've had a bit of a bigger meal or something to drink, some fizzy drink, something just before going to bed. It's probably going to help if you're sleeping with your torso slightly elevated. Now, some people generally try as a first instance to use several pillows, but I tend to find that that doesn't help that much. This is also my case. So if I put a lot of pillows under my head, my head ends up being like this. So my head is actually in an uncomfortable position, but my torso isn't really elevated because I tend to slide down in bed. So that doesn't really keep the acid down because the torso is not elevated. It's just my neck that's being tilted. So these triangular wedge pillows, they tend to elevate your torso a little bit, maybe to a 10, 15, 20 degree angle. And you're actually using gravity to keep some of the acid reflux down. Diet plays an important role. So I would highly recommend if you do suffer with acid reflux, even if you have or don't have idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis or you know lung disease, it may be useful to keep a diary or at least to kind of note 
what types of foods actually give you the reflux because it's not really the same for everyone so some people get reflux with uh, when they eat dairy products some people when they have a, a curry or something spicy some other spicy foods some people it's just when they have a big meal um, it depends on the timing of the meals as well and how your body you know processes the food so it really depends from person to person so acid reflux is a complicated thing to treat actually so diet is probably the main thing the other thing would be if you are carrying a bit of extra weight that doesn't help you can imagine if your stomach's a little bit heavier because of uh, a bit of uh, fat around the, the the belly that can press on the stomach actually and just push some of that fluid in the stomach up so you can imagine that doesn't really help so just keeping a healthy diet healthy weight probably goes a long way Obviously, stimulant drinks and acidic drinks, such as too much coffee, too many fizzy drinks, um, Coca-Cola, things like that, before going to bed, probably not a good idea. So I would avoid these if you're suffering with acid reflux in the first instance. So diet changes habits, which are hard to change, but actually can be more effective than tablets sometimes. Obviously, if you're suffering with a lot of acid, you actually feel the burn from the acid here. Taking tablets such as omeprazole, lansoprazole, pantoprazole, things like that can help. But obviously, talk to your doctor if that's indicated for you. They may prescribe it if you have idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis and you have acid reflux. This is generally where we are at this point. Now, this may change in the future based on results from research. If these studies show that indeed acid reflux is definitely, definitely a trigger for idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, probably there will be more recommendations to treat this or to prevent IPF by using some kind of an anti-acid uh, medication in people who are predisposed to getting IPF and that goes into you know a whole lot of other things familial predisposition people who have high risk factors for um, getting IPF all these things can be discussed later on but for the purposes of this comment and I'm sorry I'm making this a, a bit of a longer video but I just try to tell you all the nuances it's not a clear-cut answer whether someone should be on anti-acid medication or not for idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis or to prevent idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis from happening in the first place it's not as clear-cut that's what i wanted to mention now just to answer the second part of the comment because there was a second part so i now have ipf so some someone who, who does suffer with this condition do inhalers help with the disease so inhalers in idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis unfortunately don't do much and uh, this is just something that you know if you think about it in the way inhalers work so if you're using an inhaler you, you're basically getting some medication that goes in the airways but the airways then they get smaller and smaller and smaller until they get to the deeper parts of the lungs which is basically like a big of a spongy tissue now it doesn't really affect the deeper parts of the lungs so the inhalers are designed to treat the small airways in the lungs but not the actual tissue of the lung and they are used to actually open up relax the muscles around the small airways to to just let the air go in and out easier it's helpful in conditions that affect the airways so things like COPD chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or asthma in IPF we don't really have an indication for inhalers so this is something that i wanted to just mention because a lot of people wonder whether these may help however however there is a nuance here as well and i i just want to say this as well if you have idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis it doesn't mean that you may not have copd or asthma at the same time so people who have uh, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis which is a scarring condition of the lungs can also have an airways disease so it's not just one condition that may be affecting the lung. It's, it's similar as to other, other organs of the body. So if you are having an airways condition such as COPD, being on effective optimal inhalers can actually help your breathing quite a lot because maybe some of the breathlessness that you're experiencing may be related to that rather than the IPF. So the IPF could be mild. It could be a very early form of idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis the scarring may only be affecting small parts of the lungs maybe five percent ten percent of the lung but the rest of the lung may be actually fine the tissue may be looking fine but maybe you also have an airways condition that blocks the air from flowing properly and that causes you a lot of breathlessness so if you need to be on inhalers it can help if you have a condition that is amenable to treatment with inhalers such as asthma or copd for IPF specifically, the inhalers do not help, but everyone has 
different conditions. So we need to treat comorbidities or other associated conditions with uh, IPF. So if you're suffering from high blood pressure, diabetes, these probably need to be treated with appropriate medication because you need to treat the body as a whole. So we cannot just treat one condition. Unfortunately, as we age, sometimes we collect all kinds of diagnoses, labels and medications, but it's important to treat those early because the earlier you treat different medical conditions, usually the easiest, the easier it is because you need to use less medication to control some things. And actually overall, by using low doses of medication, low or just targeted medications for some of the conditions that you're suffering with, you prevent them from worsening, which prevents you taking more medication, if that makes sense. This is my logic, but again, it depends from person to person. But the main thing is obviously healthy living. If you are diagnosed with any medical condition, IPF or something else, it's really important to make dramatic lifestyle changes because those will actually keep you healthier for longer, slow down the progression and probably have some effect uh, on the genetics of IPF as well. And this is something that's probably going to be the next step in research, I would say. How does diet, lifestyle, stress, all these things, sleep influence the progression of idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis? And we, if we can find that there is a connection and these are all risk factors that are potentially treatable by making changes to our habits, we may be able to reduce some of the medication burden that some patients face. So I hope you found this uh, nuanced perspective helpful. Apologies, it's a longer video, but sometimes we cannot explain these things away in just a couple of, uh, mm, you know, um, clear cut answers. I'm, I'm sorry about that, but I hope you'll come back to the channel. If you have further questions, do leave them in the comment section below. If you found this helpful, do subscribe to the channel, share the video with someone you, you think might find it useful and hope to see you again. All the best and good health.